Hello, everyone. My name is Austin Belzer from Austin B Media. I'm here today with Martin, uh, the director of The Visitor. Uh, it's playing uh, at Tribeca right now. Um, it's a film. Well, actually, I, I, Martin, how would you describe the film? <laughs> hey, Austin. Um, well, I, I think it's a story. It's a story about uh, this father that has been in jail and he want to uh, recover uh, his daughter, um, uh, his, his daughter, um, how do you say in English? Sorry, my, my English is not, you know, th that much. Uh, um, yeah, no worries. <laughs> but yeah, it's a story of, 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 of this father and her daughter. Yeah, um, and I, I think that's kind of um, the visitor is really multi multifaceted. Um, I think there's no one thing I, I could zero in on to describe this thing. I mean, you, you describe the um, trying to get back with uh, trying to get his daughter back. Um, I could also zero in on the socio political things. I, yes. I mean, this is a really fascinating film. I think well, only. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, no problem. Um, so it's a cliche question, uh, but um, what inspired this, uh, The Visitor? Yeah, you know, in my other films, I also want to uh, always like have this uh, uh, very, um, like the first story, in this mm -hmm. case, the father and, and, and the daughter. Uh, the father want to get back uh, her daughter. Um, this is a very intimate and very like family story. Uh, mm -hmm. And I always um, want to, to get into deep uh, and put another layers of the, uh, and in these other layers, um, for me it's important to portray uh, my society and how I, how I see uh, the socio-political um, actuality in my country, not, not, only, not, all, not only in my country, but in Latin America yeah. as, a, as a geopolitical also um, uh, issue. And uh, yes, well, the, the story became to me, uh, you know, for me, it always comes like a, a, a little pieces, you know, the, the yeah. first piece uh, it was, I, I was to this, I, I went to this opera theater uh, mm -hmm. when this guy, this uh, singer was singing yeah. <laughs> the opera, a solo opera. Uh, yeah. He was Enrique Raus. He didn't, he, he's not an actor. And I invited him to, to be part of the film. I mean, that, that scene I saw in the opera, it was a classical uh, uh, opera. And uh, there becomes my the, the first, you know. Ah, okay, this is this is a this is a character, and then all, um, of course it, it came to the other the other parts of the story, you know, the, the evangelical church, um, the 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 you know the social issue in, in Cochabamba, in Bolivia, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, and. Um... So I guess that brings me to my next question. How did you want to portray the ins and outs of those layers, as you say, um, where it's not just about him, the social norms about somebody trying to, a father trying to get his daughter back, but also the evangelical church um, and how that kind of affects and corrupts some societies, not just uh, Bolivia, but other places as well. Yeah. Yeah, for me, uh, there has been always a, a search in my, in my work um, uh, to understand what is, what is the place that, that my country and me as a, as a person and, and my society, my family, etc. What, what, what is the, what is the place we, um, we occupy in, in, in this world um, uh, scenario uh, because uh, for a little country as, as Bolivia, uh, 
it's uh, it's always an issue what is happening not only in the country but outside. Uh, and in the last years, I, I kind of realized, or oh, I understand that uh, this is this is all connected in the history. And um, and uh, at the end, we are still kind of colony. Um, and um, yeah, we have uh, the the color the colonization heritage is still there. This is still alive there. And I know uh, this is not always this is not just in in, in the third world countries, but also uh, in countries like the United States, um, it has this uh, this uh, internal, uh, colonization, you can say, or these powers like the 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 extremist of uh, evangelical church is the trying to um, to to get power uh, and to uh, and to expand his power to other parts of the world. Yeah, for sure, and I think we. Um... Even early on, we see that. I mean, just thir 30 minutes in, you start seeing those layers start to unravel. And I, I think it's one of those films where you really have to um, pay attention to everything that's going on because it's a, I like to call movies like this uh, thinking man's movie, um, where it's, you know, some people will just uh, do like, go on their phones and search Twitter while they're watching a movie or something, if they're watching it at home. Um, but I was like, you know, I, let me pay attention to this because there's something that, <laughs> that it, it digs into the, um, I, I, I'm a huge nerd for psychology, sociology, that kind of thing. You do that, you've got a, like, any film just instantly hooks me with all that. Um, so, I want to talk a bit about more of the technical aspects. This is actually what hooked me even before we even get into the story of the film. Um, there's a there's a lot of locked off shots and um, a bluish color palette to the film. So, um, can you talk a little bit about how you uh, how the cinematographer um, just shot the film? Yeah, sure. Well, uh, the color we talk uh, a lot about the, the colors and the palette with uh, not uh, not not just the cinematographer but also the art uh, artist uh, director, and mm -hmm. um, the blue was something uh, we uh, we we think that uh, uh, it it it's gonna be important as um. But the thing is that we wanted to simulate the um, um, Renaissance pictures where where the blue is you know the the important the color and the, the primary color and it's it, it has a very symbolic uh, thing you know the blue is uh, is like the uh, it's always the the, the 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 most important part of the of the of the picture the blue mm -hmm. is there no as something like uh, clerical something like divine kind of um yeah and sure. that was the idea to to have the blue as you know as the the, the main color and then um uh, we thought about the the church it has to be like um like the purgatory you know that yeah very the purgatory it has to be red and yeah. like fire you know like kind of so Yes, uh, we we thought we thought a lot a lot about the color, and about the 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 lock scenes uh, and the format because you know it's four third uh, yeah. format of widescreen. Uh, that was also um, a choose we made uh, because we wanted to talk about this uh, society where things are structured and up up and down you know like mm -hmm. and to compose uh that in in a in a frame for me was better to have more uh, 
closer to a uh, to a what is to a square? square to a square yeah and uh, go, yeah go ahead. no no uh, no it's, it, that's it <laughs> uh and it's actually one of the few uses of that aspect ratio that actually works for me um because i'm not usually a big fan of four by three uh because a24 seems to do it a bunch uh in their films and i'm just like but what is the actual artistic decision and they're like just because we we wanted it to look really indie and i'm like no that that's not that's not what that means like killing of a sacred deer it, it was like four by three and i was just like you know why <laughs> um but yeah. no it, it really works. And, you know, when you talk about um, Renaissance paintings, I mean, one of my favorite historical periods. So we're talking pretty much same wavelength, you know, blues and reds. In fact, on the um, previous interview we I was on uh, just before this, we were talking about color theory, about uh, this man uh, is covered in uh, orange and surrounded by blackness and um, the woman is surrounded by blues and, you know, just the kind of theory behind that is fascinating. I, I mean, I could probably have a whole two hour conversation mm -hmm. just about that. I love to, I love to color. It's like, you know, my, my grandfather was a painter mm -hmm. and uh, I started like painting before, uh, you know, I, I had 12, 13 years old and I didn't know that I was going to make films you know but i wanted to to make uh, pictures you know <laughs> like paintings. yeah <laughs> and you know i think that really comes through uh, i think especially in the cinematography um because it that first shot even just five minutes um a lot of directors will be like ah oh, here's the one perfect shot or whatever um but i thought you know those locked off shots work really well because it's just like, here's something that's stable, a moment in time. Um, my English teacher used to obsess over the fact of like a story is like a window into a random moment in time. So that's another way the four by three really works for me is it's that window we see. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, I really hope people see this. I, I think it it's one of it. It's been my pleasant, one of my many ple pleasant surprises of Tribeca so far. Um, let's see, I've seen, I've probably seen about six or seven films uh, at this point, um, including yours. Um, and so that people can see it, um, it will be screening on physically on June 11th, June, June 14th, and June 19th, all at the Angelica. Uh, I think you can buy a single ticket for $25, um, $25. Uh, or if you're just at home, uh, you can uh, pay, I think, $150 for Tribeca at home, where it will be available starting on Monday, June 13th at 6 p.m. But uh, Martin, thank you so much for your time. I, I know it's been a hectic Tribeca so far. I actually know somebody who's also interviewing you today. Um, I think his name's Raul. Um, I'm, I follow him on Twitter. Um, but yeah, I think he's, yeah, Raul Alejandro Mendoza. Uh, Raul. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's going to be interviewing you today, probably right after me. So I'll yeah. let you get to that. Um, but thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much, Austin. It's, it's a pleasure to talk with you. And thank you very much for your kind uh, um view of the film your your kind uh, approach and your um, deep uh, uh, closer to the to the to the to the film thank you very much yeah no problem i i really do hope people see this because i a lot of films like when i ever uh, whenever i go to a film festival i try my best to see things i don't normally see and those end up being those pleasant surprises that I see, like uh, Mooptopia or You Can Live Forever have been real surprises for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's the nice of the film festivals.
Yeah, but uh, I'll, I'll let you go. Um, but thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Esteem.